Hello, hello, beloved starlings. Welcome. I've got my echo thing on. There. Now it's not echoing. Hi, welcome everybody to this very special episode of Starseed Mission Support. I'm going to start off as usual. I'm only streaming on YouTube today. Um, I'm trying out this new thing because I realized that when I streamed from my previous host that the video quality is horrible. So <laughs> I'm just testing it out today, streaming from YouTube only um, to see if the streaming quality will be better. So I'm hoping that uh, people will find their way to this live stream. Um, I might actually share the link on my YouTube channel. So just hang in there with me for one second. Oh, welcome. Yes, I'm very excited to um, share about these beautiful avatar babies that are coming in and so i want to welcome you to star c mission support and um, before we get started anywhere i'm just gonna uh, sing us into our space here <laughs> of you that are here in the room already just take a nice deep breath into the body welcome Starseed Mission Support. We're excited to be with family yet again this week together.
Welcome to Starseed Mission Support. I'm so happy that you are all here tuning in live. Welcome. We are just streaming to YouTube today. And so we're all here together. Everyone that's tuning into the stream is here on YouTube. So welcome. Join us in the chat and uh, come hang out with your planetary angelic family from all over the world. Yeah, let us know where you're uh, where you're tuning in from. Somebody from Japan. Hello. Love to Japan. And we have a very special episode of Starseed Mission Support coming at you today. Saying hello to New York, to Vancouver, to Santa Fe. Uh, um, I think R.I. is Rhode Island. <laughs> I'm hoping that that's correct. <laughs> Hello to Ottawa. Brilliant. So beautiful. Thank you so much for tuning in live and connecting in. We're creating this wonderful, beautiful grid of energy all over the world. So I'm so excited. Oh, boy. Um, Today we have a very special um, transmission. And... Yeah, so I know that, you know, in the recent times, the last time that I made a video about Kara was, I think, in March or April. Um, at that point, I shared a full detailed story of my entire experience with her the first time around. You, um, If you haven't uh, seen that video or you're new to following my work, that video is posted in the description below. You can check that out after this live stream but just to give a general synopsis <laughs> this is a wild story um i first became pregnant with kara in um august of 2019 at that point i had been communicating with this being on the other side for three months so she first really came to me sometime in april and um, at that point, when she first came in, she showed up with three pairs of red wings, and she was this beautiful angel. She just came to me in a vision, and at that point, I was practicing all sorts of Taoist practices that um, worked on, you know, ceasing the menstrual cycle, life force energy, and of course, this is a natural contraceptive that then um, you can kind of communicate with your somatic intelligence to let it know that, you know, at certain times in your life is not the right time to make children. And the original sovereignty template of women, we were originally designed to carry that awareness and that power to choose and decide. Um, obviously, that has long been snuffed out. And this is a huge part of our conversation together. I'm going to just turn my mic down a little bit because I see that it is clipping there. Okay. And so when Kara first came, she was like, I'm coming in. I'm coming to, she like opened her palm like this and this little fire came out of her hand. And she said, I'm coming in to teach you how to materialize from thin air. And I need you to stop doing these practices because I'm trying to come in through your body. And I was like, I don't know if I'm ready to be a mom. And she was very insistent. She says, you're ready. 
this is the time that I need to come in because, you know, there's a timeline thing. It's going to take her, you know, a couple decades to grow her body into an adult. So she's like, look, lady, I need to come in. I need to come in through you and I need to come in right now so that I can do what I need to do on the planet. Um, and so um, I, um, she came to me again um, probably a few weeks after that first initial visit. And the second time she came to me, she showed up as this massive Mayan shaman who was like six foot seven, you know, huge. I could just see this huge man that was very muscular, but very lean at the same time. He lived in the jungle. Um, she told me that he was a, sh a Mayan shaman and that he, the last time that he had been on the earth was before the Mayans all ascended together. And he became a master of the elements and he ate like, you know, a lot of herbs and worked with the elemental spirits. And I could just see all of this like shamanic elemental green energy, just like a very clear sign of a, a compact and integrated and masterful energy field. Um, and so she's like this, I'm showing you this to illustrate to you that I'm not a child. I'm going to be a baby when I come in because I need to come in. <laughs> through a body, but I'm not a new being. I'm not here to, you know, be molded or to be taught, you know, whatever. I, I'm, you're going to support me and teach me how to be a human, how to crawl, how to talk, how to walk, and all of those things. But um, I'm carrying a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge. And in fact, I'm coming to the world um, for very specific reasons. And then I was staring in awe, you know, at this shaman master shaman because i could see the integrity of mastery that this being had embodied you can kind of see it in the coherence of their light body and their energy field where you can just see that there is such an integrated um and holistic and compact is the word that keeps coming up but it's a it's a uh, a texture of energy right when you feel comfortable it's a maturity there's a mastery there and so I was thrilled to learn from this being and so a few months after that I moved out here onto this land that I'm currently stewarding in New Mexico and basically immediately after I arrived here to the land I became pregnant with Kara in late July maybe early August of 20. Um, 2019. And so um, while I was pregnant with this being, um, she basically, we had like a telepathic connection where she became my best friend. Like I communicated with her probably more than I did with real people in real life um, to the point where, you know, we were having conversations about our mission on the planet and where our souls have been. And she was you know, streaming information to me about, you know, uh, the original templates of birthing, like orgasmic birthing. And she was teaching me about planetary grid work and all of the viruses that existed, um, particularly around the womb and women as she was inside of my womb. And one morning early uh, that year, I woke up at, at three in the morning and I think I believe this happened because at that moment, my system was the most um, subtly aware because I was like between the dream realm. And it's like, as soon as she wakes me up um, at three in the morning, my mind was still very wide open. And so I was able to channel or just stream this entire class about womb healing and the return of a very specific energy, the original divine mother goddess frequency. Um, and we're going to get into a little bit about how this energy is so relevant and why it's been persecuted on this planet and how it's literally architecturally an attack on planetary and universal and human sovereignty. But essentially, um, I channeled this nine week course, which became the healing the womb class back in 2019. That was the first iteration of that class. And for my whole pregnancy, she taught me about how the cervix is a stargate of life and that, you know, our whole reality is a holographic fractal uh, emanation. All of life is birthed through our anatomy. And it's very interesting because these are the same teachings that I, I was already streaming in from my ascended Taoist ancestors. So it's very clear that Kara is a part of this lineage that is bring these teachings back to me this is like this cycle of ancestral 
knowledge. So in a huge way, I do feel like Kara is my ancestor is very interesting. Um, but to experience that viscerally through my own body and through her coming through this vessel was an initiatory experience of, you know, really feeling these teachings in action because these experiences impacted me in such a massive way that I'm going to share uh, with you guys a little bit about today. So essentially what happened afterwards was that um, she started teaching me about orgasmic birthing and about how, you know, this planetary belief that birth is painful and that it's scary and that women's bodies are not coded with the wisdom that they need to give birth, even though, you know, it's a responsibility and um, a gift that was blessed upon women. There were many religious and planetary um imprints and viruses that have been installed into the planetary consciousness um and so who um these viruses have been installed into the planetary consciousness to control creation energy and so we think about the source of life on this planet it's from the women's bodies is from wombs there's not one human being on this planet that was not created from a woman's body um, except clones, I guess. But, you know, all organic human beings came from the body of their mother. And so there is a multi-dimensional metaphysical light body um, correspondence to how universal energy flows through bodies and particularly women's anatomy and the womb and the cervix um, that amplifies our ability to facilitate and create templates and hold the reality from um, life. And so I hear somebody saying, have you made this announcement before? So I've not made the announcement actually before. And so every time somebody's commented being like, hey Z, are you pregnant? I actually, you know, did not reply. I was totally not ready to talk about this. And um, I did um, announce it partially at the end of the Pleiades Gateway to the Pleiades Gateway um, family. But this is the first time that I'm, um, I guess I didn't even make it clear that yes, Kara is indeed coming back. I am currently gestating her body and um, we're very excited for this. Um, and you know, that is um, why we are bringing this conversation back. She's been asking me to make vlogs because for the last month or two, uh, once again, um, this telepathic connection has Re reestablish itself to the point of her showing up in my clients um, dreams and meditations and also basically taking over my sessions and then uh, channeling through this second iteration of the healing the womb container again and the um, you can find the link to that down in the in the uh, description below but basically um i've not been really comfortable with sharing even though she's been asking me to make these vlogs because um you know kara did transition back to the other side um she stayed the first time so she was born may 20th on the pleiades gateway she stayed a total of nine days and then she actually uh transitioned back into the other realms and so um that was a whole initiation in and of itself that I am going to talk a little bit about today. Um, but if you want to hear, you know, my whole uh, focused um, storytelling of that experience, you can find the video in my description down there is a video that I made in April or something like that, I think for her birthday. So maybe in May, I don't remember um, when exactly it was like March or April that I made that video. But I told the whole story from beginning to end. So if you're curious about that, you can um, write that. But you guys are super intuitive. So it's been really hard to hide this news from you guys. Like almost every live stream I do, there's at least one of you that are like, Z, are you pregnant? Is Kara coming back? Are you pregnant? And so it's very hard to <laughs> hide and keep secrets from a very intuitive group of friends. When I shared this news, you know, I, I had like 20 people who were like, oh, I knew it. I already knew you were pregnant. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> so that's what happens when your friends um, are super intuitive. You just can't 
keep it. <laughs> yeah, so people are having dreams about her. She's very um, productive. I mean, she has a huge mission. And so, <laughs> yeah, so I specifically have not said it on YouTube ever. And I specifically have ignored it every time that somebody mentions it um, in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I did mention it um, in the Pleiades Gateway. And anywho, so let's see here. Yeah, so I want to just keep on this dream of the process of birthing for a second because it was still, um, it's a relevant part of our conversation today. <sighs> okay, so yeah, as I was pregnant with her, she started teaching me about orgasmic birthing and about how the cervix is actually a stargate. And so imagine all of the people that believe that birthing is something that's painful, is horrible, that birthing is a life-threatening medical issue. And that, you know, I have so many friends of mine that you know, they're my age and they're like, I'm not having kids because I'm not going to be able to handle the pain. And, you know, it's just so deeply ingrained in our society that birthing is painful. And so, you know, many people opt for uh, medical um, drugs that numbs the pain, you know, and then um, artificially induces um, birthing. And all of that means that babies and children are entering into a gateway of numbness, confusion, disempowerment, right? And I'm not saying that medical births, you know, they don't save lives because they absolutely do. But the number of um, medical births that we have right now is like 99.5% of people are born in hospitals. And this is like when I found that statistic, it blew my mind because, you know, um, the reason why there are so many interventions is because, I mean, if you look at the statistics, the most common day for C-sections happen on Fridays. And that is because the doctors are wanting to get off work. And so they're like, all right, ladies, let's get on with this. And that just goes to show, you know, how our society um, understands and holds space around these sacred moments when a soul is literally transitioning into this world a whole life begins you know it's just something that is so sacred and so Kara um, taught me about all of these things and also taught me that you know the pain that we experience through the birthing experience is because of all of the trauma that we store in our cervix and what trauma does is it freezes and it constricts our muscles right? So when we have trauma releases, we kind of shake and we start to shake these tension, this tension in our body. And we can hold tension in any place, in our back, in our heart, you know, in our um, legs. But the cervix is like a, it's such a deep and such a core place inside of our being that most of our emotional traumas and our interpersonal relationship traumas and our ancestral traumas and our past life traumas, it kind of all coag coagulates down there. And so if we don't actually engage in healing, what happens during a birthing experience is that the cervix is actually unable to completely relax to, so that the, the birthing process becomes actually a pleasurable and an orgasmic and a relieving kind of releasing experience. And so for the last, you know, five months, as we were doing this healing the womb container, she continued to facilitate these healings where we then went in and did all of these layers of the healing of the cervical area, release of, you know, multidimensional sexual trauma. Um, I am somebody that has gone through probably all kinds of sexual trauma, um, physical, childhood, abductions. Um, template level, soul body level, angelic DNA level, you name it. The reason why I've gone through all these things is because, you know, I feel very deeply that I'm meant to be holding space for women in the healing and the total restoration of these traumas all the way up to the, to the soul level, because that's the level of work that we're here to do. But none of that high level work is going to happen unless we engage it from a human level as well. And so I know that I chose these experiences very specifically in my human life to learn the the um, the 
techniques and the abilities and also to experience the healing of those things and to be a reflection of that um, it is not only possible to completely heal with these from these traumas, but it's possible to even move beyond that into a, a even further level of embodiment of compassion and love and power and all of those things. Um, and so, yeah, as we are doing all these levels of healing, you know, I'm I'm seeing these layers of healing happen in real time. This is when I started remembering my reptilian abduction experiences, and those were horrific. And also started um, retrieving memories from you know sexual abuse when I was in boarding school um, around six six or seven years old. And so um, these healings with Kara were so profound, and I know that she was preparing me for an orgasmic birth. And so the day that the labor came, I felt like I was very prepared because not only had I done this cervical healing, but she was also teaching me how to hold cross-dimensional space for her to come through. And so for, for all of her consciousness to be able to enter her body over a course of many years. And this is, again, something that's coming through um, from all the avatar babies, because there's about a couple of hundred of them flying around my head. Many of you see them. I get messages all the time of people being like, Hey, do you know that you have like hundreds of babies flying around you? And I'm like, yep, uh, they're definitely not all coming through my body, but <laughs> they've chosen me to advocate for them for some reason. And so advocating for these kids and almost like um, recruiting parents to sign up for um, being a channel for these children. I mean, they're just very particular and I'll also go into that as well later on in this video. But there's just so many things that we have to take into consideration when we are literally um, bringing souls from the other side. And that's why there's so much amnesia in our world is because parents have lost these original knowings of how to hold space. Becoming parents is a shamanic gig, right? You're literally bringing a soul from the other side to this side. There's nothing more shamanic than that act. And so there's a lot that goes into it. And much of that is um, that knowledge has been lost. And so these avatar babies, they really need us to meet them halfway. They are so freaking excited to be on the planet. And God, we know we need them. We need those beings here because they are so clear. Their templates are pristine. The knowledge that they carry is immaculate. And they just need, you know, a little extra support from us and understanding that, you know, uh, some things happen very deliberately. And so um, during our birthing experience, um, I experienced excruciating pain for a moment. And I was like, I thought I did all of this cervical healing. And why is it still hurting? And I kid you not, in the middle of giving birth and being in labor with this baby, I get pulled into this grid work trance that often happens as I'm out there doing grid work, you know, I'll tap into a higher dimensional field and start receiving information about the grid and what's happened there and what's happening there and what the significance is. And so as I'm in labor with this baby, I get pulled into that field. I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing grid work right now. <laughs> this is the last time, you know, the last situation that I would like to be in that scenario. And so as I'm tuning into the grid work field, I see that what's causing the last layer of the pain that was inside of my cervix and that's creating the pain was this planetary viral um, insertion that, you know, pain in birth is punishment because we ate the apple in the garden and it's our fault that we got kicked out of heaven basically and that you know it's just this hysterical anti narrative that's basically i mean it's so deep because i didn't grow up christian my parents are not christian their parents are not christian but this is a collective planetary artificial insertion of consciousness that is subconscious and energetic and it's energetic in that it was literally anchored into the light body of the planet and so all women whether they are christian or not they have parts of this virus this patriarchal virus that was literally inserted into the planet to control creation energy so as we we're saying before 
creation energy, creation flows through these mother bodies. And so if that was the case, and if there was negative ET group that wanted to control creation on this planet, what would they do? They would degrade and control women and women's sexuality and how birth happens, right? That makes total sense. It's logical. And so if they want to do that, then the next step would be they would mind control the men who are meant to protect and love the women and the continuation of life. They're meant to honor and revere. When you think about the Native Americans and even, you know, um, certain um, mythological archetypes of, of men, they are, you know, there's this, this masculine energy right? Of valor and honor and love and devotion and reverence. This is the original masculine emanation. And in nature, men are not built to harm women. That's the last thing that's on their mind because it's their nature to honor and revere life. And if men loved and, and honored and wanted to devote their love to being in service to life, then consequently, they would then express that energy towards women because women are continuing life and they're growing. So as, you know, obviously being pregnant, I'm very connected to that life because there is a whole life that is gestating inside my belly. And I'm thinking about how, you know, this, if this being, right? We're talking about these original templates. It could be 500 years. Imagine all of the emotions and the experiences and the art and the creations that a being could bring in, in 500 years. Now, imagine if all of your parents were thinking about that and just bringing in the goodness of your potential and dreaming through the qualities that you will have in your life as you're pregnant with them and birthing through that and holding that vibration as you're growing up. I mean, the world would be different. And so it's very easy for us to then see that this has been a long-term agenda. In fact, the source of this agenda at this cycle um, began in you know, the fall of Babylon. And this is when the anti-Christic um, you know, all the stories, some of the stories you hear in the Bible, the anti-feminine, anti-life, anti-Christic, anti-Christic teachings begin to uh, be anchored into the planet where they begin to say, you know, female sexuality is sinful and that all sexuality is sinful and that your bodies are just naturally sinful. And that, of course, the body is an emanation of ma matter or mater or mother. So in that sense, we all are experiencing this feminine embodiment because we're all in a physical body right and so there's been an attack on the innocence of the physical body as well as there has been this attack on women and their power to create because these negative beings were are trying to control creation energy so really what i'm saying here is that patriarchy has nothing to do with men or women but in fact is a um artificial construct is a virus is a planetary control system that was placed onto the planet and it mind controls men and women differently to serve the same agenda of controlling creation in this plane. And so, you know, I'm in the middle of labor <laughs> and this is the stuff that I'm downloading. I'm like, oh my God, it hurts because it's my fault that we kicked, we got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And I got so mad. And so Kara and I like ripped this, um, <laughs> ripped this mind control implant out of my cervix. And then all of a sudden my cervix opens and I had this orgasmic, like it felt so good as she came through the birth canal. <laughs> and so it's fascinating and hysterical that, you know, sometimes your destiny is just so integrated that every part of your life, even if you're just cooking food or if you're in labor becomes a part of your destiny and and your personal experience and so um as i'm reflecting on that i'm actually realizing that this that experience it was just the beginning because what happened soon after that was that she only stayed for nine days and the nine days that she was here i could feel her coming in and out of her body and we were working on a planetary light grid and she was able to literally open this portal because she, you know, when people are born and when people die, portals into the other realms are created. And so this is also why, you know, in the old times we would celebrate birth and death in such an immaculate way. And we would do a lot of praying and a lot of ceremony because we understood 
that when people are born, when people die, there's a thinning of the veil and we have access to the other realms. And so these days as she's coming in and out of her body, I can see her weaving these lines from source where she just came from to the physical. And, you know, these nine days, she was very busy. She continued to visit, you know, my clients in their dreams and she was healing me and she was working on this portal she was building. And then on the ninth day, she um, left her body. Um, for my human self, I had no idea that was coming and I basically died with her. <laughs> she pulled my consciousness uh, to the other side and I did not sleep for three days. Actually, during those three days, I was pretty much in a uh, spiritual, exalted um, state of absolute union. And I was um, absolutely, it's, it's hard to describe. I'm kind of out of the right words at the moment because I'm tuning into the energy of what it felt like. And what it felt like was that my consciousness was pulled back into unity back into the fabric of all that is where everything is connected and there is just so much love god's love divine love permeating through everything and that's all i could feel for the first three days after she transitioned i couldn't i i was kind of my physical body felt kind of numb on honestly i was just in a daze but my consciousness was in this place of absolute divine union with god um in and, and within myself. Um, and the the feeling was so holy and so profound that that was all I could feel. It was like there was no thoughts and there was no fear. There was no, there wasn't even any grief yet because, you know, she really pulled my soul to that place and I couldn't be anywhere but there. And then um after the three days had passed, I got dropped back into my body. And that's when all the humanness came in, you know, the screaming, the crying, the numbness, the depression, the falling on the floor. I think I'm going to die. You know, all of those human feelings. And she was on the other side and she held me through it all. And it took me three, um, three months, four months before I was actually ready to engage with her, uh, to receive her teachings and her guidance again. Um, but at that point, what she shared with me was that Kara, so it was a name that she shared with me again, like five in the morning, I woke up, I looked down and there's this sound vibration radiating from my womb. And all I hear is Kara, 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 Kara. I said, lady, you don't have to yell at me. She's like, I don't know if you, you know, dimwits can hear us from the other side. Just kidding. She didn't say that. She was like, I just wanted to make sure that you can hear me because I know that you guys you know, are a little bit hard of hearing on the other side sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so I was like, I hear you as Kara. And at this point, four months after sh her transition, she shared with me that Ka, Ra are the two first uh, emanations or syllables of creation. And then of course, Ka is the light body and Ra means illumination or the solar energy. And so Kara together is the illumination or the ascension of our light body and so she said that i am your ascension teacher and that you have no idea what we are able to accomplish through this experience and through your willingness as a soul to um embark on this um collaboration together because as she was able to come in and weave these lines and as she went back to the other side you know she was able to open this portal that allowed god's love into this world and I know how many lives she's already touched because I get emails almost every day from people that have either had dreams with her in it or had her visit them in their meditation. And she's already mentoring. Many of them remember her because she's been an ascension guide for a very long time. And so um, at that moment, you know, I was still in my human pain and I said, you know, how could God do this to me? I love God so much. And I can't believe that, you know, God would, you know, just betray me like that. And, you know, we all know that feeling sometimes, right? Sometimes our human self don't always understand the bigger reason why certain things happen as they happen. But the most profound moment that I had in that period of time was when I was literally just on the floor crying every day because it wasn't just that I had lost a baby which is probably the greatest pain that a mother 
can experience. But also that, you know, I had already built this beautiful relationship with this being that I was talking to every day. And I felt like she was my best friend, like someone that finally understood my soul so deeply. And, you know, we were kindred spirits on a level that you know, we were going to be best friends. And so it was the the grieving and the loss of this entire timeline of having my best friend with me in this world. And so um, in that moment, four months into my, uh, I guess, dark night of the soul, <laughs> despair, um, she came in and gave me this big hug. And she said, I think we're ready for this next step. And I, you know, was so tired from all of my human despair that I just surrendered into the energy and I just kind of leaned into her. And in that moment, she began to pull my consciousness up again into that vibration, into that field of absolute inner divine union with holiness, with God, with our true unity, with our true source, with the true essence of who we are. And I could feel that if I allowed and I didn't cling and I just felt all of the emotions as they came through that I could feel these human parts that were in separation that were so in belief of separation and of death and all those things as I leaned into her embrace those denser parts of me began to release their pain and their illusions of separation and what I began to experience was that these lower or these physical or these denser parts of my human self began to ascend back into connection. And I could feel that if I continued that process, eventually I would get into this vibration of lightness that uh, I would be able to materialize something from thin air because I will have ascended all of my density into a higher dimension through this profound connection with the sense of holiness inside of me. And in the moment of that teaching collapsing into my body, she giggled across the sky and she was like, see, I told you I was coming to teach you how to materialize from thin air. And I was just sat and I was left there baffled, baffled, honestly, because, you know, there's a lot of um, information about ascension and about all sorts of stuff. But it, I've never encountered anything as real and as um, impactful or as full of depth. And also simplicity as that moment. And that's when I fully surrendered to the truth that Kara is my ascension teacher. And, you know, through these experiences and continued um, connection with her, you know, she continues the whole space. And I think what is beautiful is that she is on the other side. And which means that her template is just super clear and pristine. She's not weighed down by the humanness. I think that one thing she continues to reflect to me is that, you know, we are, um, you know, of the same soul family and that we're, that we're reflections and that he, she's making me say these things that I'm very uncomfortable with saying at the moment because I'm totally, I have this pattern of hiding behind her where I'm like, oh yeah, Kara is a great ascension teacher and she's here to teach you all the things and Kara's like, we're doing this together and you're doing this too, so stop <laughs> hiding behind me. <laughs> Anywho, um, so recently, in the last couple months, um, so I actually became pregnant with her this time around at the end of July. And there were a lot of synchronicity that happened around that. You guys, you know, the reason why I made the last video, I think it was actually called Kara Returns, is because I came, um, it was the equinox, March 20th or something like that. And there was one of the original 13 Atlantean crystal skulls that was coming to the land, that was called to the land here to activate the land and me. And when the skull arrived, I had this crazy spiritual fever. I was delirious. Like I was totally not in my body. I was so sick. And so um, that was the day the skull had come. And Kara comes flying in. And she's like, I'm coming back. And I was like, I don't believe you. Whatever. Yeah, right. You're coming back. You know, I just really didn't want to get my hopes up. And so I didn't want to believe her. And but then a couple weeks after that, I decided to actually make that video. And so in the video, it wasn't clear. 
that if she was coming back, or at least I felt like her spirit was coming back because she started coming to coach and teach me and mentor me again. Now, the <laughs> crazy thing is that um, as from now and like, you know, before I got pregnant to the time that she transitioned last time, it's been this consistent process of opening and healing the heart. Because I remember the day that she transitioned, it felt like my heart broke and fractured into so many pieces that it became as vast as infinity. And that was something that was so profound to me because I, I'm sure many of you can relate to when our heart is broken, that is when more love can enter, right? More space can be created. And so sometimes we experience you know, suffering and pain and separation and heartbreak, but really ultimately, you know, it's God and it's our higher self breaking us open to experience even greater levels of love. And so I remember this distinct feeling of this hammer just shattering my heart and then it exploding into a million pieces that reaches the end of the universe. And for the coming year, she con continually reminded me, like every time that my heart would hurt and I would just you know, weave, it would open my heart into more, to contain more and more of God's love and to allow more and more of God's love to flow through me. And then this became a battle between my soul and my ego because, you know, my human self clung to the pain and the confusion and the suffering and the complaining, you know, I flipped God off a couple times, just middle fingers to the sky, you know, I can't believe you did this. And, you know, finding that place of surrender in those places of my pain to open a little bit more and a little bit more. And eventually I was able to, because the pain in my heart was so great that sometimes it blocked my connection to Kara. And so unless she just really came in and knocked me off my feet, it was like I almost like went into numbness, you know, days at a time. But there were times where, you know, by the time I had made this video um, in April, um, I started this new training where I started singing with her. I would feel the pain of the loss and grief in my heart. And if I just kept going and kept feeling the love, it would release the pain in my heart and I would feel this greater expansion of divine union come in. And so it was a very profound obviously profound initiation. Um, I, and I know that in our spiritual community, there's a lot of sayings, right? There's sayings like um, everything's here. Ev everything happens for you, not to you, or, you know, find the silver lining. And it's like, all of those things are superficial unless we can apply them in the moment that it really matters. And this is when I get messages from people, you know, like a lot of some of the people I see in our community, they're like super spiritual, you know, posting all these pictures of their, you know, crystals and all the stuff. But then when something bad happens, it's like that's when the initiation is. That's when you're being called to actually embody those states of mastery the most. And so if we can't embody, you know, in those moments, then that's okay. And we need to just look at, you know, where we are and be honest with our process, right? And so I knew that um, there was something very deeply profound that was happening through this experience. I know that it was part of my training because, you know, I am meant to um, sh shine my light in a profound and um, big way. And yet I see a lot of people that have big platforms that, you know, fall into greed and fall in their vibration and in their integrity. And this was an opportunity that anchored me in such a way because the thing is that the devotion inside of my heart for God and for the holiness and for the true templehood and for all of humanity to be sovereign, you know, these prayers are embodied even in the moments when I experience a catastrophe in this experience with Kara, right? Even in that moment, I was willing and am willing to reach for that highest light and that reach for that highest temple master vibration. And so at this point, if I 
fell in vibration or went into greed or went into disintegrity, I would be dishonoring that experience in my life and with Kara. And so I think that this, I, I don't know if I'm communicating that concept <laughs> clearly, but it just cemented in my reality, you know, what my life is for. Like even in that moment as I was giving birth, I was pulling this massive planetary virus you know, I was exerting. It's like I'm devoting my whole life to this and I'm doing it willingly and I'm choosing it because I love humanity and I love God and I love creation so much. And this whole experience just deeply ingrained that inside of my heart. And I know that, you know, it's because we're here to do massive things and there's going to be things that try to derail us. And it's almost this fail safe at this point that has been uh, anchored and so you can imagine my excitement to realize that she is returning I couldn't believe it that's why I didn't share it with you guys sooner because it's only been in the last couple of months that she's once again showing up in my clients dreams and taking over my sessions and in my field all day being like don't do that. You're you got to <laughs> you got to run the correct template here because we don't do that anymore, you know. Um correcting and holding me accountable to my highest vibration every single day. And so I was very excited that she asked me to bring back the healing the womb container, um which is something that I just finished building the website for. You can find the link to that in the description is www.wombhealth.org. I'm also really excited about <laughs> that domain. It might sound a little weird, but the reason why it's so great is because it's the real who. So is the real uh, World Health Organization where we heal the womb from the highest and deepest template levels to restore true health and sovereignty to this planet. <laughs> and so that's the kind of level of work that we're going to be engaging this round with Kara still on the other side, I am just in awe of what is possible because last week we um, completed the curriculum, which you can now check out on the website. But essentially the first three, four weeks, we're going through sexual healing of the physical, etheric, emotional, and template soul levels. Um, this is something that every starseed probably need or need to experience or need to go through because, you know, abduction is a very real thing. Temp template distortion is a real thing. You're carrying these pure original templates of creation. And these are the things that are the antidote to the antichrist energy on this planet, right? So if you're carrying the antidote, then, you know, throughout your life, abduction and genetic manipulation and all of those things are kind of, you know, uh, in the field and in the reality. And so um, Kara is on the other side. She's very close and she's able to transmit these pristine templates of creation. And we are going to be doing planetary grid work as well. Over the next month, I'll be sharing more about the distortions. For example, there'll be one episode of Starseed Mission Support on the sexual misery technology and the programs that is connected to you know, pornography and mass media and um, even down to the societally accepted forms of relationships and sexuality and birthing, you know, it's all fucked up. Um, and it's all fucked up, not for any 3D reason, it's fucked up because they are interdimensional beings that are wanting to create human, I mean, wanting to control human and planetary creation energies, because this is a very powerful creator planet as well, that has many stargates that go into very uh, beautiful and immense realms in this universe. So this is a highly coveted planet, and humans are meant to be the multidimensional coded stargate keepers. That is why, you know, humans are so highly coveted and our DNA is so highly coveted. And so, you know, this is definitely a deep, deep container for um, that work. Um, and I just can't really express enough how much I am in awe and how honored I am to be um, bringing this through with Kara. And I also um, 
is connecting in with the <laughs> other avatar babies that are wanting to come in. There are so many of them. There are hundreds of them. And they, you know, the things that Carrie are, are sharing with me, for example, it's like when we are on the ascension journey ourselves, we can slide, right? We're like, oh, well, I'll just have a cheesecake today and I'll just watch some Netflix. You know, it won't matter. Um, you know, I'll meditate and, you know, it's okay. Sometimes I'll meditate and sometimes I'll just indulge in the false matrix a little bit. Well, when you are pregnant with an ascended master, they let you know that those vibrations are extremely uncomfortable and distorted. And it they remind you that there's just, spectrums to this path right to being you know a star seed to being a spiritual um, a spiritual person in our community so many things are watered down and we get we become satisfied with so little like oh I had a tingle in my spine oh my god I'm so spiritual I feel satisfied I say do not feel satisfied right follow that yearning to experience your absolute divine potential because everything in this reality is deliberately blocking you from that. TV, the matrix, scarcity, jobs, right? Every single thing. And now this, this jab thing, like every single thing is here to deliberately hinder you from connecting with yourself, connecting with your truth, connecting with God, experiencing the potential of your being. And so in order then to break through that, you have to be more deliberate than the society, than the false matrix. And they are very deliberate. At this point, you just look around. I mean, that agenda, right? the current assault that we see on the planet, on human society, highly organized, highly deliberate right? They've got the president in on it and they're just going all out. And so how much deliberate action do we have to actually exert in our day-to-day -day life to live up to, you know, our potential and what we truly desire to experience? And this is when we find our true power and find our true sovereignty beyond victimhood. Like, oh, you know, the false matrix is so hard. I can't make any money. Like, yeah, that's all true. And who are you? You are an infinite and powerful and highly coded warrior agent of God. You are God. You are God's prayer that has materialized here on this planet, in this world. And so, you know, it's very, I feel that Kara's energy is very like Jedi master, but she's also got this super sweet feminine, obviously this divine mother essence, but the, the, the divine mother can be you know, um, strict as well, where she's like, can we do a little better today? Can we inch a little bit more towards our alignment today? So for example, you know, recently, um, I can't really be on my phone anymore. Like I can't really just be on the phone or just like watch a video. Whereas before, at least I can just like, if I wanted to relax, I can watch like some cute cat videos, no longer a thing. Can't do that anymore because as my field gets finer and finer, as I'm doing more and more light body activations, as my high self is collapsing and my light body is coming online, it's becoming more and more evident that certain vibrations literally directly cancel out ascension energy. And that is, again, why phones were designed the way they are, where you just are scrolling or you on Netflix. I mean, Netflix is horrible. There's nothing good, almost nothing good on Netflix. But all that is saying is that it feels like, you know, these Ascendant Master babies, they want for more parents to be open and to desire for them to come in, but also realize what's entailed, right? Because if you call in an Ascendant Master, how are you going to show up in your life to actually be a role model for them or to hold space for them or to imprint what is normal for them? So these are the things that I'm thinking about, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, which is catapulting me into a higher level of mastery. Because again, when it was just me, it could be easy to be like, well, you know, I don't want to get crazy. <laughs> you know, I don't want to get too into that. I don't want to be too extra. But as I'm realizing this pristine spark of God is coming to this planet and she's carrying so much knowledge, so much wisdom so much divine love, so much mastery, so much truth. And it's my duty to be a guardian for that. 
It's my duty to hold space for that. It's my duty to protect it by creating boundaries around what I'm going to allow into that space and what I'm not going to allow into that space, right? And that has to do with how conscious I am and how present I am in every now moment of the day. Because again, energies from the outside are very deliberately wanting to come into the space, right? It's like, you know, you're like just tired and you're going for a scroll. Now, when you're just scrolling, usually you're dissociated from the body. And so what's coming in your body, the programs, the energies, the distortions, the AI, whatever, those things, you know, we're not even aware of what's coming into the body. And then, you know, we feel drained and depressed and we feel anxious and we feel disconnected. Well, you know, there are very many etheric implants that come in through technology. And so I'm even considering of doing ESA on, you know, worksheets and audio only because I don't want people to be staring at a screen at all. Um, and so, you know, I'm still figuring that out because I think audio um, will be great. And I think the sound chambers are great. And I'm definitely considering all of these things because we are detoxing from a very toxic society that was built to enslave, built to capture souls and built to disconnect us from our divinity, from our source. Um, so those are the things that are her experience. And so, yeah, yep. I think that the phones are getting um, more intense too. And I know that sometimes psychic attacks can... Um, can come through the phones as well. Um, yeah, because sometimes, um, like the other day, I was getting like weird imprints, right? Like, you know, doing this work and being very open and very outspoken about the negative alien agenda. Like, I know that I'm, I'm pissing some people off in the other realms. And so sometimes I do get psychic attacks and, you know, I've gained very strong um, techniques and holding my field and blocking those out. But I definitely feel the other day, just having my phone close to me, like there was a vibration coming through that was like pr promoting very violent, like they, it wanted me to hurt myself. I was almost like hurled it across the room. I, I'm like, I'm not playing with this. I'm going <laughs> to, these things are, you know, no joke. Um, and actually I have a light technology that I have created um, I basically put a filter on my computer and I'm, I've made very strict boundaries. Like when I'm on my computer, I'm focused, I'm channeling what I need to do. I'm building what I need to do, but I'm not going to mindlessly do anything. Like there's, you know, I've even decided that, you know, maybe for just a couple of hours a day, I will look at my messages. So I don't really, you know, read my messages anymore, except those designated hours, uh, because we have to protect our own innocence, right? Our own inner children in our own body, our bodies can be addicted to these vibrations. And it's our job as our body's guardian, as our body's parent to create healthy boundaries and support um, and, and, and to um, protect <laughs> these innocent biological parts of us very much like the innocence of our children. Um, and so, yeah asking me to begin to vlog about our experience for ma many weeks I've been very uncomfortable because obviously my human self is like but you died last time and I, I you know all the all the human feelings as you could possibly imagine but I think that um this is a gift it's a huge gift uh, because again the channel is so clear when she's on the other side and there's a power to that channel being in my womb at this time. And all of that is going to be, uh, you know, an energy that's going to be present in my field over the next few months. And so whether you or not you're going to be in the Healing the Womb container, um, you're going to be receiving those gifts if you want to keep tuning into Starseed Mission Support. You know, most of the things that we talk about, I, I really try to share as openly as I can for free on my YouTube channel. And then there are certain temple spaces that are contained. And so for this one, um, we are going to be doing some really deep sexual healing. That is why, you know, we need um, people that are have a strong foundation, right? So if you're someone that, you know, can't afford this container at this time, you know, 
it wouldn't be the greatest for you to try to open up some of these super deep trauma doors because we we want to protect you. We want to hold space for you, but we also don't want to put you in a situation where you are overwhelmed, right? For me, I know that it was only when I had security in my root chakra that these deeper wounds could even surface. And so it's part of the safety mechanism for you know, everyone in the container to be stable enough that we can do this planetary work together. That's one of the reasons why, you know, it's priced at the a price point that it is. Again, I'm looking around as way cheaper than other things that are out there. And this container is obviously just going to be really profound. Um, it, you know, how many times in a lifetime can you experience the teachings of an ascended master being transmitted through, <laughs> through uh, the womb space? And so, yeah, another thing is that it, you know, we are going to be doing this together. There's a very big um, energy of togetherness because we're going to be addressing this energy on a planetary level. And so when as many activated templates as we can get, so for the first few weeks, you know, we are doing this deep work and I kid you not on um, week six, we have a webinar about removing this a planetary curse on women. And when I created the curriculum and when I chose the starting date, I literally did not plan for the sixth webinar of when we remove that planetary prison technology to be on February 22nd, 2022. It just aligned and, and landed on that day on its own through synchronicity. And so that's why I know that it's going to be super potent. But in order to engage in that level of work, um, obviously, you know, there needs to be a level of stability and groundedness um, and already a process that has started. And so, you know, that's kind of I'm getting really hot. Uh, what's available? That's what's available um, here in the space, um, as well as just profound support for healing, of course. Um, think that uh oh yeah and you know this this container is going to be a direct learning experience from Kara I really feel like I'm her desk clerk in this class uh she's saying that that's not true and then I'm hiding behind her again but <laughs> um anyway um it's very exciting to bring these levels of teachings through because they have been eradicated from the planet and I hope that you can feel just the pristine purity of what is coming through and I hope you check out the intro video to the class because um, you can feel that vibration of those energies, those pristine original creation consciousness energies um, pour back in. And this is what we want for the energy to come back onto the planet, even though it has been persecuted and eradicated. What we need is for us to become the stargates of original creation energy and that's really why it's so profound to be able to learn from Kara at this time because that's what she is, is pristine, original divine creation energy that is absolutely unhindered and undistorted by humanness, by human energy, um, by ancestral trauma, by programming, by anything. She's just pure creation energy that we um, have the gift and blessing of receiving at this time. And it's truly mind-blowing. Um, honestly, it leaves me just quite in awe of that alone. And I feel quite honored and delighted that I get to experience that. And I think that, again, um, we're, <laughs> um, it feels like I'm a spokesperson for these kids. I'm like, who wants to, uh, who wants to incarnate an avatar? Because I mean, it's not going to be easy because you will face all of your ego and your shadows and you will be consistently <laughs> pushed to your limits of how much healing you can do in a day. But <laughs> there are so many pros to that as well. So. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> and on that note, I'm just scrolling through these comments here. I had the comments blocked earlier because it distracts me when I'm speaking and then I lose my train of thought. Um, yeah. 
yeah so it's the same soul it's the same soul signature i'm learning the same things as um i am back then and for those who are new um i recommend going down and watching that previous um let me just fix the oh man <laughs> come on the previous um video that was made in march that is down in the description below anyway <laughs> yeah so i'm so excited that you guys are tuning in and i'm just more than excited yeah so um the the womb healing container is starting January 18th, which is a month before the Academy is launched. And obviously, if you want to join the Academy, you can just join after um, because the Academy is going to be an ongoing thing, right? It's going to be available for years and years to come. It's not a, a time sensitive thing, whereas this womb healing container is kind of a, a coordinated moment in time. And obviously, there's greater forces working at play here. We're going to be working with um, our Syrian um, support teams and our angelic support teams because this is planetary grid work that is aligning on those dates on their own i'm just like i'm i'm just witnessing it all <laughs> happen just being like what you know this is cool <laughs> z do you communicate with the galactic team through clear audience so i i actually communicate through them through subtle sense perception um which means that you know it's kind of a form of telepathy they don't really speak often in english they send me a packet of energies that then my um you know the back of my third eye the alpha uh, the alta major chakra then translates into english um and so this is a much more efficient way for them to communicate. So oftentimes they can send me like a big packet of information and you can actually take me days for me to unpack it. Um, but this is so they don't have to sit there for, you know, 10,000 years, earth years to teach me one thing. They can just be like, boop. <laughs> I'm like, it takes me a few days. Um. Where can we find information on the Academy starting in February? So um, I've shared about it in my YouTube videos. Um, there's not um, a lot coming out yet. But if you go on the website earthstar.academy, you'll find a tab that says Mystery School. You'll see about 20% of the curriculum on that page. That was the old container from last year. So, you know, you can kind of start to tune into the kind of classes that we'll have but you know it's only going to be like 20 percent of what's actually going to be available tasha says i've been working on my subtle sense perception but i'm nervous about it because there are spirits around me all the time and some of them are not good so whether you are aware of it or not there are spirits around you all of all the time and some of them are not good so you might as well want to be empowered with sight um so you can uh um actually be aware and know what to do right and um i think that there's a lot of superstition out there in our spiritual community that uh makes spirits seem like scary or like you know all these things and superstition is something that occurs when at, at a previous level of consciousness in humanity when we have to guess at things and create mysticism when at a certain point you know light body and interfacing with planetary realities becomes a scientific thing. And so um, don't be nervous. Just keep working organically inside of yourself. Um, make being aware of yourself the main goal and not any externalized thing, right? Not, oh, I want to communicate with my team or I want to heal people or I want to 
all these things. It's like all those things will be the byproduct of when we cultivate our subtle sense perception. But to know ourself and to become sovereign in ourself should be the first and foremost motivation because that's when we can make sure that we're doing things in right order and we're not getting into funny business in the spiritual community. I want to give a shout out to our mods, Liz and Cassandra. Thank you so much for being here week after week and just hanging out in the chat. You're so appreciated. Um, we've only had to block like three people in the history of our streams. So that's pretty great. <laughs> Yay, I love you. Yeah, so I know that I'm getting ready to enter a uh, another round of my mission, kind of like a more crystallized, a deeper um, phase of my mission. And so I definitely appreciate um, our returning viewers to hold the field because I feel like as we grow you know I'm being told that these transmissions are going to um, reach more people and that um, yeah because there's so much um, misappropriation of you know fear tactics and um, uh, people um, conspiracy theories and all of that stuff and um, I feel like there's a way to address those things in lucid clarity and we can just address it and move on, address it and find, you know, actually the solution, which is our original DNA, DNA template and transducing divine love energy through our body. You know, all star seeds were here to do this. And I hear very little about that in our community. So, you know, we need to talk about things in a non-linear, non-3D perspective, right? Even as we're talking about you know, pedophilia and the plague and all of these things is like, we're just really wasting our time and giving away our attention. If we just talk about them from a 3D perspective, because we're not going to find the source. And if we're not at the source, then we can't find our lucidity. And if we don't have our lucidity, then we're going to be lost and we're not going to know what to do. So we're collapsing all of these different lines in the new age, in the disclosure community and, and realizing they're really one thing there's no separation there's only this one system where the star seed the truthers we're all the light workers we are one we're awake because we have an advanced dna template that transduces higher dimensional consciousness because we were we came in with dna templates that are not as tempered with not as degraded as the rest of humanity and this doesn't make it us better this is just our gift to humanity this is how we can support this planet through the ascension is by actually maximizing our potential and realizing our potential as these highly coded dna templates so we begin to create that ripple in the human collective that all humanity then begin to reflect that original template as well and so you know the true disclosure is that there has been this negative alien agenda of planetary universal control that begins in a higher fallen angelic realm and all of the things that we see in the disclosure community all of the things that we see are byproducts and are side effects and are the product of that negative alien agenda and so when we just cl collapse those things we're like okay that's okay that's the truth and you know now it's like okay and <laughs> there are these angelic um embodied fractals of God that are here on this planet right now that are here. And Amy says, I've been struggling a bit between wanting to throw myself at petitioning against global totalitarianism and embodying the light and spreading it. I think that those two things are the same. And, you know, embodying your light is the highest form of weaponry you can have, right? Because the war is spiritual. The war is on human spirituality and so if we're not embodied in our god's light then we're basically falling in right to the 
um, agenda. And that's why they want to. So in my book, we talk about nine stages of starseed awakening. And stage five is inappropriate action or premature action. This is when people just wake up and they're like, oh, I want to just run a conference. And they have no training, no awareness, no subtle sense abilities. And, you know, their conference gets taken over and they're hijacking human energy and they have no idea that's happening. And so it's like, unless we are whole... We're not going to receive the high vibrational solutions to collapse higher dimensional realities into the world. And so in order for us to ensure that we are exerting our energy in the optimum way, we collapse and we work on our light body first, and then we are inspired naturally on the things that we can create. <sighs> And so it feels good in here. We're just getting started. We don't need to hurry any place. We are right on time. We're in alignment for the universal planetary conjunctions for the great awakening. We are at the forefront of planetary awakening. And this is something that we should celebrate. And we're so excited. And so how does one override resistance to the work? My greatest tip for that is to recognize that there are parts. So usually when that happens, you have a conflicting part. So you have one part that's like, we want to send and we want to do the work. And then there's another part that is frozen or is stuck in a previous belief or a trauma. So you just need to slow down and talk to that part and ask them why they're resistant, you know, sometimes they're scared and they need you to just slow down and hold space for them to explain to you their feelings completely. And this is why it's hard to just override it because we we're not trying to override the resistance. We're wanting to have gnosis around the resistance um, because that's also, you know, your protection mechanism. You don't want to act out of divine timing. So maybe there's a part that, you know, is frozen in a past life that was, you know, killed or whatever. Um, and you can actually just slow down and say, well, I want to talk to the part that's in resistance. And sometimes there's many, right? Uh, and that's why also we can't just override them as one thing because they're just different parts of us that need our attention and our love, our inner children. <laughs> True, Chris says, how can we free ourselves from the system? <laughs> this is a big question. Let's see if we can answer this um, in a brief way. I guess the uh, first thing that we need to do is recognize that our self has been living inside the system, right? And so that means that certain beliefs and realities and energies and frequencies and habits and thoughts have infiltrated into our being. So the system is inside of us. And that's the shittiest news that I could tell you, <laughs> right? But then what you want to do is begin to differentiate inside of you between what it feels like to be yourself and your divine self, which is like, you know, divine love, joy, creativity, peace, harmony. And so when you start to recognize those energies, start to differentiate and parcel out what parts of you are free or in original template and this is when you can start to become aware of when you act out of alignment with that when you are stuck when you are vibrationally inside of the false matrix Does that makes sense and so it is an inside job it's very you know it's, it's empowering to know that you can free yourself from the system by literally evicting the system from your body its beliefs its patterns its energies its thoughts Right. But um, obviously, my school is all about this. It's a <laughs> it's a long process because we talk about healing our inner children and our emotions and our past lives and our energy body. Because, again, this whole system has been put in place for thousands of years to keep you inside of it very deliberately. So it's going to require deliberate action and healing to actually, you know, maybe healing from the system is a better word because. You know, the system is an overlay on top of the original system that is already here. <laughs> hmm. 
Yes. Um, so I'm super excited for these upcoming Starseeds mission supports um, because we are going to be talking about some deeper things. We're spiraling into the core traumas, right? The taking away of our abilities to create. Like the fact that so many of us lived or live in lack and scarcity, this is a result of soul level assault on a planetary level. It's not normal. It's not natural. And so there's a whole vast sea of soul level trauma that are there that are directly connected to our human sexuality. It's such a deep, um, profound topic. Um, and I'm just ready to ride into those spaces with all of you. And I'm so happy that you're here with me. <sighs> Doesn't it feel good? It feel good to voice. <laughs> all right. So on that note, uh, I love you all so much. Um, now that the cat is out of the bag, I think I will make, you know, here and there little vlogs about my daily life uh, within a, a little ascended master in my, in my uterus. It's like having a, another third eye in your uterus is <laughs> another, I mean, it's a psychedelic experience. I'm sitting there sometimes and I'm just, you know, in another realm with these babies, like drooling. <laughs> um. Yes, I love you. And thank you so much for all the love. And just know that I I need that love. I need you guys. And your love helps me so much. Your love for me is the greatest protection that I can have. And I realized yesterday that, you know, I am happy to be in the front of the battlefield. I'm happy to have my wings open wide and to charge, <laughs> you know. And I, um, I, I acknowledge that this is what we're starting to do um, because, you know, there are beings that came before me like Lisa Renee that has shared so much information about this. And we're really stepping into the next level of our mission here where we're beginning to enter into mass consciousness. We're beginning to actualize the critical mass. And so this is something that we are doing together. Absolutely. I am here um, in the front of this battle for all of us, um, because, you know, the more that we can bring this stuff into a wider audience, the more that, you know, um, we, we can provide that support for humanity, the closer that we get to bringing this into mass awareness, like this level of clarity, this level of God's love. And, you know, when I'm looking around at our community, like, this is a level of maturity that really the planet needs, right? It's like about you come down to the planet, like if we're all like, look at all my chakras and all the stuff, like humans are going to be like, uh, you are who uh, God and higher dimensional scientists sent to save us, like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, how integrated and embodied in our higher dimensional ascended mastery do we have to be to actually represent higher dimensional angels on this planet? And so the whole reality and all the timelines are literally just waiting for us to collapse it, right? It's not about the enemy and when the enemy will die or when they will disappear. It's just about when we land on the ground sufficiently, right? And really then the timeline is benevolent. The timeline is um, responding to our ability to anchor and hold planetary responsibility. And this is where we're going. You know, I've seen visions of when starseeds take over television, and we're like, all right, humans, go find your neighborhood starseed for healing. Now, if that happened now, you know, we were not, we would not be prepared at all because we don't know how to remove implants. We don't know how to deal with people's inner children. We don't understand how deep planetary bio spiritual abuse truly is. And this is really the perspective from which we're coming from with Earth Star Academy and with the channel. You know, I feel very deeply that, you know, you guys have nominated me to support you and to be this transmission station so that we can all fully remember and come into this mastery inside of ourself. 
right? This is what's required of us because humanity needs us to support them in a deep way. And it's not a walk in the park. It's not, you know, this fluffy thing. It's like planetary bio-spiritual abuse is what it is. You have to know how to hold space for that properly before, you know, that critical mass can hit because that way there's not going to be pandemonium. There's not going to be crisis. There's just going to be a harmonious transition. And that's really the timeline that we are um, we are anchoring. Tasha says, people keep talking about alien disclosure. I keep laughing at them and reminding them that we are the fucking aliens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And so this is inspiring and this is excited, um, exciting. <laughs> and it's also, you know, cross generational. It's intergenerational. It's like every little step that we can take right now is supporting these hundreds of avatar babies. And I see that uh <laughs> um <laughs> ascender master in my ears. Yes. We're supporting the future generations because it's like I mean, I I know that Kara is coming in to get the job done, right? These babies, I mean, we myself included, had to work backwards so much, right? It's like, even with the template that I have and the connections that I have, my I really went through a lot of crap. And I know that so many of us have. And so for me to feel like I'm able to create this space for Kara excites me so much because I can't even imagine what any one of us would be capable of if we were held in that reverence and sacred space when we were being born and when we were growing up. It's like if our light and our higher dimensional gifts could be acknowledged by our parents, like we would be far beyond where we are now. And so I think that this is fostering true cooperation, true togetherness, true intergenerational wealth, which is all the stuff that the cabal, you know, wants to destroy the family unit, intergenerational care and love, ancestral knowledge and wisdom being passed, all that good stuff. Um, it's up to us to bring that back and to embody it and make those things alive um, and well inside of our being. And that's how we keep those things alive on the planet. So I'm fired up. I'm so excited to be with my family it just feels so good in here the chat is always so inspiring and brilliant and this is the stuff this is what we're talking about turn the lights on ah <laughs> good vibes and so on that note thank you all for tuning in today it's been beautiful as always to hang out i have a very special video coming through in the middle of the week i got to interview and have a chat with um amazing woman named marguerite rigo yoso um and she wrote the book um the ancient traditions of miraculous conception which is a book that blew my mind and um we talk all about the you know, ancient Christed priestesshood and this womb work and, you know, the pinnacle of that, which is miracle conception and how, you know, we talk about Siddic powers and really that's just another one. And that these women, they were not just ignorant little girls as depicted in the Bible, right? In the Bible and in these stories are like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. I don't even know what happened. I'm just a dumb woman. But in reality, these were highly trained priestesses that basically have devoted their whole life to mastering light body harmonics and you know embody siddic powers just like any ancient master have to do and so um it's beautiful to catch up with her and her work that video is going to come out on wednesday super excited about that can you put the title here the link to the book it's called the mystery traditions of Miraculous Conception by Marguerite Ricolioso. And um, yeah, you'll find information all about that as well when the video comes out on Wednesday. Um, of course, it's so connected to these avatar babies coming in. And that's something that we talk about as well, because in the old times, you know, that's really what you 
would have to do. Think about, you know, Jesus coming in. How did Jesus get in? Well, did you know that Jesus' mother, Mary, was actually born from miracle conception herself and that her mother and Jesus' grandmother was part of this priestess lineage that had, you know, devoted her whole life to ascended mastery. You know, she was in her late 50s and post menopausal when she conceived Mary um, immaculately. And so, um, yes, this is um, absolutely incredible to bring these knowledge and these understandings back. And I definitely feel that these are the original Christic vibrations and templates that are returning um, through our uh, miraculous and mystery school experiences with these beings. Um, so on that note, that's a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a rabbit hole for you to enjoy. And, um, I love you so much and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.